we had a bunch of food to the studio today. But what if I told you all of this food came from the same kitchen? This kitchen is a part of Rebel Foods. They started from Bangalore, that is a unicorn, and made 900 crores last year. Since 2011, they've disrupted India's cloud kitchen industry. And they got her by nailing four things, starting with their pivot into a cloud kitchen pot. See, you may not know Rebel Foods because that came much later. First, there was Fasos. The brand, known for its roles, opened by two IIM graduates, Jaydeep and Kalol. See, it was meant to be a high street QSR, which attracted a premium audience. But this dream was short-lived. High rent, lack of high street locations, and slow revenues meant the duo had to do something else. So they went deep into their data and found out that about 70 to 80% of their locations were only doing delivery orders. Then they did a customer survey and asked one simple question. Have you ever seen our physical outlet? The answer blew their minds. 74% of the customers said no, they hadn't seen a single outlet. Suddenly the future was clear to them and the vision became make India's biggest internet kitchen. Now see, to understand how Rebel disrupted the cloud kitchen industry, we need to zoom out to understand why cloud kitchens came up in the first place in India. What's the real industry inside here? So let's dig a little deeper here. The fundamental behavior of eating outside has always been there, right? This is you. Now, before Swiggy, you would call the restaurant near you and a guy from that restaurant would come and deliver your food to you. This had a lot of problems. This restaurant would charge for delivery, you couldn't track the order, there was no discount, and it would take crazy amounts for this order to be delivered to you. This is the behavior that Swiggy came on to disrupt. Remember, this is the India of 2014, 2015, right? Massive urbanization was happening. People were moving to cities like Bangalore, Bombay, Delhi, and access to home-cooked food was reducing for people. Now, Swiggy and Zomato were making this logistics-heavy category of delivering, turning it more into a lifestyle business. Plus, this generation was savvy and Instagram was helping with food porn. Now, the insight here is that Swiggy and Zomato are largely supply-driven marketplaces. And we'll dig deeper into how they crack supply. But see, the consumer here is the same, right? You and me. So the only way they make a good business is by increasing the food orders that we place in a month. So the frequency of orders need to go up. Plus, they also have discoverability, right? By opening a barrage of food options near you. Earlier, when you had just a couple of restaurants near you, you could eat outside like once in a month. Now, when these apps showed you 40 options, you started eating out twice a month. And so the question became, if I show you 80 options, will you eat out four times a month? Yes, people did. So supply solved retention. Now, this changed the way people thought about food and the frequency of ordering online went up. So the solution was clear. Supply will solve retention. But how? See, keep increasing food options for people to order from and the frequency of them ordering food will go up. Makes sense, right? So the idea became clear. Open as many restaurants as possible. But there's one problem here. CapEx. And this is where cloud kitchens make an entry. See, the foundational insight for food delivery to emerge and succeed as a category in India is that they have to democratize the supply side which basically means that the number of options to order from have to increase. And it makes sense for Indians. See, every Indian wants to own a restaurant one day. A cafe in the mountains, a fine dining on a high street, a food truck you could travel with, all of that, for sure. But when Swiggy uncovered this supply problem statement, they went all in to create a wave of supply. And they did it via cloud kitchens. But the question to ask here is why would food entrepreneurs be interested in a cloud kitchen and not a full-fledged fancy dine-out restaurant? See, that is because of three core reasons. Dine-out restaurants by default are very ops heavy. So first, you have to cover rental at a prime location. Second, you have a kitchen staff plus a service staff that you need to pay. And third, a lot of dependency is on the staff. Like the chef is known to bring in their own teams and you have to keep them happy because staff attrition is very high and if the chef goes, the entire team goes with them. This every food entrepreneur will tell you. Now let's make the difference between a dine-out restaurant versus a cloud kitchen super clear on the base of financials. But before we do that, 
If you've been liking this video, you'd love the GrowthX newsletter. We publish two extremely in-depth pieces every week that give you an insight into what's really happening in the world of startups and businesses. It's read by over 90,000 plus growth leaders and founders across top product companies. Click here or go to the link in the description to subscribe to a free newsletter. Back to bisecting the PNL of a dine-out restaurant versus a cloud kitchen. Okay, for a dine-out restaurant, 25 to 28% goes in food cost. 5 to 7% on packaging, 15 to 20% on labor considering kitchen plus service staff, 10 to 15% on rental, and around 5% are on miscellaneous costs. So the gross margin comes to about 25 to 30%. Now for a cloud kitchen, the food cost is similar, so around 25 to 28%. Packaging cost increases a little bit, so it gets to about 7 to 10%. Labor cost is lower because remember only a kitchen staff is needed, plus they have machines now. So solid about 10%. Rental is lower because they don't need a prime location, so about 8 to 10%. Now, this gives you a gross margin of about 50%. Now, if I do give away 20% to Swiggy and commissions, I will be left with about 30%. And remember, this is with significantly less hassle and a way more scalable menu. But, 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 here's the interesting bit 30% gross margin is with a single brand in a kitchen. Now, if I operate two brands from the same kitchen, my margins become 2x. If I operate three brands, 3x. 4x with four and it goes on. This is the game Rebel Foods play. Rebel has more than 20 brands under their umbrella and all of them operate from the same kitchen. Now, you know the financial incentive of having multiple brands operate from the same kitchen and we'll go way deeper into this much later in the video. But what's the user insight? When Jaydeep and Kalol understood that rolls wouldn't make them enough money with fasos, they got into pizzas. They thought they'd try to score a chunk of the 1500 crore Indian pizza market. But people didn't buy it. And it makes sense, right? Think about it. You associate burgers with McDonald's, pizzas with Domino's, coffee with Starbucks. Now, if any of these places started to sell Chinese noodles tomorrow, would you buy it? Not really. Plus, it would confuse the brand in your head and that's what the problem was. So when the duo figured this out, they launched Urban Story Pizza. And that took off. A brand just made for pizza made sense for people to order pizza from. And today, Urban Story by itself is worth 140 crores. In 2017, Swiggy got this insight of building the supply side. Remember, create more options and it will result in more people eating out. So two things happen here. One. Every big food institution like Truffles in Bangalore, Fluoris in Kolkata, and so many more, they want to expand their network and serve more people. And second, like we discussed, every Indian, for once in their life, wants to build a food brand. But for both of these folks, the infrastructure cost to build a restaurant or even a cloud kitchen is very heavy. So in 2017, Swiggy launched Swiggy Access. And the pitch was clear, right? You want a fair shot at building your food brand? So, here's a kitchen, here's some space, here's all the infrastructure you need so you can just walk in with a chef and their team, list your brand on Swiggy and start selling food literally tomorrow. This is a massive win-win for any food entrepreneur. Why? Say the core of it, these food entrepreneurs, they don't have to solve for discoverability or reach or delivery anymore. How? See, take the example of Core Mangla in Bangalore. Say, Swiggy has about 2 lakh users in the area. If your food brand converts even 1% of them, that's 2,000 people. Now, in our dine-out restaurant, you may not even have space for that many people in a day. Plus, if I have two cloud kitchen brands operating from the same kitchen and both of them capture 1% each of that market, that's 4,000 people plus served without any additional marketing. Plus, Swiggy made it easy with all the data that they had access to. They knew specific things, for example, a time and audience segment where the demand for biryani was super high during lunch and was not being met completely. So they would suggest you to open a biryani brand that would serve that area. And entrepreneurs loved it. Swiggy at once would have 20 plus brands operating from one large kitchen. Imagine the economies of scale unraveling there. But Swiggy access didn't work out for Swiggy and they sold that business to Kitchens at. The reason was simple. He Swiggy has always had logistics in their DNA. I mean, they have, they have more than 3 lakh delivery executives. That's like managing 3 lakh employees. Plus, 
If you add the cloud kitchen business on top of it, it became like a real estate business where they had to solve for attrition of these brands who were tenants. So basically keeping in mind that I have a big kitchen, I have to make sure that there are multiple brands operating from it and they are operating from it for a longer time. Plus, they were not really charging rent, right? They were charging a cut of the order value. So this model wasn't sustainable for Swiggy, but it's different for Rebel. This is the same play that Rebel has. They want to become the ultimate cloud kitchen platform. See, Rebel doesn't care about the delivery logistics side of the infrastructure bit. Their Rebel launcher model is a plug and play where any brand can come, set up shop, and start selling from their kitchen from the very next day. Rebel has food in their DNA. They understand brand. They have a network of cloud kitchens all across India. Plus, they cracked cold chain of delivering food all across the country. And this is exactly what they're doing, right? I mean, they have brands like Naturals, Wendy's, and Slay Coffee partnering with them. So this plug and play model works for them. But now we are here today when Indians are ordering or eating out about four to eight meals a month. In the US, that number is about 20 to 30 meals a month. In Singapore, condos don't even have kitchens because it's cheaper to order and buy from outside rather than buying raw materials and cook it inside your home. So two things have to happen here for this model to succeed. Labor and food supply. See, there is a labor arbitrage in India. The maids working at urban homes, they're fairly cheap. So it's cheaper to pay them monthly and cook food at home. And not a lot is going to change here in the near future. But for more food supply to come in, basically for more restaurants and cloud kitchens to open up, the supply side has to become democratized. And that will only happen if it becomes cheaper for people to open food brands. And as we discussed, right, when supply increases, food delivery as a category will emerge in India. Which is why, if you think about it at a category creation level, and it's very interesting, Swiggy and Zomato are solving this by solving the logistics infrastructure layer. Rebel is doing it on the consumer insight of food by providing cooking infrastructure for brands to come and operate. And Cure Foods is doing the same thing on the route of acquiring food brands. Basically acquiring multiple brands with some traction and bringing all of them into one kitchen. But if you zoom out, all of these players are solving the same thing. More selection and discoverability for users. But to make this scalable, all the players will try to remove the operations hassle and staff dependencies from this model. So for example, Rebel is not just called an internet cloud kitchen for the sake of it. They really have replaced chefs with machines. They have equipment that mimics a chef's motion and helps cook in a scalable fashion. It takes away any human dependency and uncertainty from the process. And this is how Rebel has built a 900 crore cloud kitchen brand. Now, the next time you order from Fasos or Avan Story or Behrouz, you know the insight behind this business. Plus the fact that all of this came from the same kitchen. Now, will Cloud Kitchen as a model survive in India? We'll have to see. But that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one.